Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are at Blade Show 2022. We're at Benchmade, guys. Uh, really exciting. Uh, they got some fun stuff coming out this year. We're going to talk to John and uh, take a look. Um, you guys are going to want to see this. So let's go ahead and talk to John. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good to see you guys. Um, yeah, if you can, we can just run through some of the knives here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll take you through all the new product for this year first, and uh, we'll kind of talk materials and things like that. So some of this is out now. Some of it is not available yet, but we'll go through that. So we'll start, uh, we'll start with the flagship here first. So I think everybody's hopefully pretty excited for this. Uh, we've got the 945-221. This is the Gold Class Mini Osborne. So uh, this is launching in August, actually. We'll be running this for a year. This is available as a what we call a uh, limited, unlimited. So we've got uh, eight gear pattern Dama Steel here. We've got an aqua blue anodized aluminum bolster, Arctic Storm fat carbon scales, and this really nice uh, 24 karat gold plated floating backspacer. So yeah, these will be available in uh, an unlimited quantity for 12 months from August to August. So I'm super excited about this. Great. Um, you know, the, the Osborne's been around for forever. The 940's been around for forever. And, uh, you know, for years, people were begging for us to do a mini. So finally got one out there, and uh, we just felt we had to do a, a, a gold class. You know, it's just we couldn't stay away from it. So yeah, yeah, super absolutely. pumped about that. Um, I'm usually not not that into smaller knives, but um, it's just so gorgeous. I'm not going to be able to resist. So uh, I'll definitely be picking one up. And then here we've got the new 533-3 Mini Bug Out. This will be coming out in a couple of months as well. Um, so this is, uh, for those familiar, this is a smaller version of our 535-3 Bug Out. We've got an S9DV blade, carbon fiber scales here. We've got this blue anodized um, backspacer here. And uh, yeah, I mean, just what you see is what you get. The Mini Bug Out has been super popular for us. Obviously, the Bug Out is a huge franchise for us. Um, so. I'm a, I'm a big sucker for this knife, I love it. The Mini Bug Out is my wife's favorite as well. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's great for smaller pockets, smaller hands, um, and just in general, obviously, a great ultralight EDC knife. So yeah, yeah that'll be coming soon. This one here, I'll pull out both versions, but so we've got the Weekender, the 317 Weekender. It's actually gonna be launching in about a month uh, with the Micarta. S3DV blades. We've got a bottle opener here as well. This is a slip joint. Um, I'm a huge fan of Micarta. Uh, I love to see us using it, so I'm excited for us to be doing some more with it. Uh, for those familiar with the proper, obviously, you know, kind of share some similarities yeah, yeah. there. So, having fun with the slip joints. Um, obviously, you know, these appeal to a different crowd, but especially like modern traditionals, this is a this is a really nice knife. Um, we've been using them around the office. May have taken one to a bar here and there, but uh, you know, you didn't hear that from me. Um, but yeah, these are coming. Uh, this will be uh, in the first, I believe the first or second week of July, and then this will be coming out uh, about a month or two later. Great, great. Yeah. So this one's available now. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, some of you are already familiar with it, but uh, we've got the Anonymous, the 539GY. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Crewwear Steel. Um, for anybody not familiar with it, this is a super, super tough steel. Um, this this blade can be put through a ton of abuse uh, without worrying about you know chipping your edge or rolling it or anything like that. One of the nice things, because Crewwear is so tough and strong, you can run it pretty thin without worrying about it being fragile. So the Anonymous ends up being a, a really good slicer for being a fixed blade, a full size fixed blade knife. Um, and also a lot lighter than you would expect it to be too. So I mean, super comfortable in the hand. Um, we've got this uh, enlarged uh, sharpening choil that's also ground to a sharp 90 degrees so that you can use that to strike a ferro rod. And nice. uh, I have personally used it for that a couple nice. of weeks ago in Montana. Uh, broke down some wood, started a fire all with the Anonymous, also cut some stakes with it. And uh, yeah, it's just a beast. It's awesome, it's lightweight. And uh, yeah, I'm actually a huge fan of this one. So yeah, avail that one's already available. Keeping with the uh, crew wear theme, this is the Raghorn, the 15600 OR. So this is actually uh, coming out later this year. And this is gonna be the first hunt knife we've made with crew wear steel. So again, you're getting that super, super tough, uh, you know, and uh, great edge tension. Uh, we're putting select edge on this. So you're gonna get that nice 14 degree per side edge ultra fine, great for push cutting. 
And again, because it's crew wear, because it's so tough and strong, we can run it super thin. So this is really, really lightweight and just slices like a laser. Uh, and the nice thing, you can go to this nice tapered thin edge and you don't have to worry about it being too brittle, you know what I mean? So the carbon fiber scales are really nicely contoured. This is just so much fun to hold in the hand. Um, I'm really excited to see what people think about this knife, hunters in particular. Um, we've got this jimping up here in the pinch grip, which is uh, angled so that like your fingers want to move down and away from the edge or up and away from the edge. Um, so really great features. I think it's, it's just a well thought out big game knife. Um, I'm super excited to see what people start thinking about it when they use it in the field. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, the meat crafter does not need any, any introduction at this point, but uh, this is another favorite of mine in the kitchen especially. We just launched this one about two months ago. This is the uh, 15500 OR-2 in CPM S45 VN steel with carbon fiber scales. And then uh, the 15500-3 meat crafter is coming out in a few months, also in CPM S45 VN steel. So um, we're super excited about this blade steel. We debuted it in the meat crafter a couple of years ago. Very, very tough. You get um, good flexibility in the blade. Nice. And we, uh, we spent a long time really working on engineering that and making sure that we got just the right amount of flexibility. Um, this is basically a hybrid between a boning knife and a fillet knife. So we spent a lot of time working that out and making sure that we got that balance just right, the length just right. Um, and I, I'm a huge fan of it. I use this knife in my kitchen all the time. That steel is fantastic uh, when you're coming up against bones and things like that. I've never had to worry about chipping an edge or rolling it or anything like that. Um, obviously it comes with select edge, so again, great push cut performance and it's an ultra fine, almost mirror polished edge. Uh, it's just phenomenal. I can't say enough nice things about the Meat Crafter. And we've been, uh, people have been asking us for S45 VN for a while um, since we debuted it originally in that first version of the Meat Crafter. So we're excited to bring that to people and actually give them what they've been asking for too. So yeah, pretty that's, cool. That's great. Yeah. yeah. We'll definitely be doing more with that steel too. to help move things along. We'll go with two different knives here, but okay. first up is the Flyway. Um, this is another one that I'm pretty excited to see what people think about it because it's been a while since Benchmade has done sort of a dedicated bird knife, uh, bird slash trout knife. So the Flyway, the 15700, um, is designed for, you know, obviously, you know, upland, waterfowl, that kind of a thing. Um, would be a great fish knife as well. This has got CPM 154 steel. So um, again, because it's nice and tough, we can apply that select edge to it. So you get that super fine cutting, but this just feels really nice in the hand. Great for, you know, using it. I mean, even as a caper, you know, it would be great for caping and stuff like that. But um, we've got jimping right up here, right where you want to put your finger. So that gives you a nice fine precision and control up near the tip of the blade. That's so great. I can't wait to see what people are saying about that because we're all super excited about it. You know, like I said, it's been a long time since Benchmade has done something that specialized. So I'm pretty excited for it. That's but, exciting. Uh, this one, being a big bug out fan, I'm really excited for this. I've been playing with one of these for a couple of weeks and just love it. Um, so this is the tagged out, and this is so it's the 15535. This is a knife that was inspired by a lot of feedback that we were getting from people. We talked to, we like to talk with people at shows. Um, you know, we go on, on uh, uh, you know, do a lot of market research. We go out and we work with experts in the field, and everybody's been talking about using their bug outs on their hunting trips. You know, and they, you know, people are not shy about giving us feedback, and that's what we want. You know, and so a lot of things we were hearing is, hey, it's a great thin slicing blade. Um, but we'd love it without thumb studs. They get snagged on things. Um, can you curve the handle a little bit? So putting a little bit of curvature in the handle means that you get uh, you don't, aren't twisting your wrist quite as much as you're working. It's yeah. a little bit longer than the bug out, so you get a little bit more purchase to it with a little bit more texture, especially up here in the forward pinch grip area. Yeah. Full height grind on there, which is the thing I love about it the most. This is probably one of the sliciest blades we're gonna have in production, uh, wow. e maybe even more so than the bug out. Wow. Uh, and it's also gonna be our first folder with select edge. This is gonna be at 17 degrees per side. This thing is unreal. Um, I have been using it in for just everyday, you know, carry kind of situations, but also in my kitchen. I've been using it to cut snacks and cut steaks. 
and it's the best steak knife I've ever used. So I'm super pumped about it. I cannot wait for this to launch because I think people are going to lose their minds over it. I really hope so. I yeah. hope I'm not overselling it. I love it. So I'll ask, are you going to put it in the custom shop? Uh, TBD. Okay. TBD. Okay. Uh, you know, we, I mean, we have, obviously, we, you know, we, every company's got a roadmap. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, we, we're really focused on making sure that we launch this, in, you know, and it, it's the best version of this that it can be. And we really want to see what people think about it. Got it. Um, but just my own personal opinion, I can see this, you know, having great longevity just like the bug out. I yeah. mean, I think it's a phenomenal knife. So I'm really excited. I mean, along with the bailout and even the shootout, you know, those were all inspired by the bug out. And uh, I think this definitely is a, a great successor to that, that legacy, if you will. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what people think about it. I've seen people describe it as sort of like a uh, cross between a bug out and a mini Crooked River. Absolutely true. I think that's a great yeah. way to describe it. So, yeah, yeah that's I, exciting. I can't wait for that to get in people's hands. Absolutely. Next up uh, is the Redoubt. This is the 430 Redoubt. Um, and I would say this is kind of a, a cool evolution of the Griptilian. You know, it's like a uh, just a really nice, lightweight, tough workhorse knife. You know, um, yeah. it's a little bit thinner in the handle than the Griptilian, but you still get plenty of good texturing. Um, really nice purchase on it. I love the way that this feels in hand. I'm super excited about CPM D2 Steel. Um, you know, D2 obviously has been around for a long time. Uh, it's a, it's a trusted steel. The uh, CPM process, Crucible's Powder Metallurgy process, uh, really turns this steel into something incredible that, I mean, it's almost a night and day difference between the two. Um, toughness through the roof, edge retention is fantastic. You can get a much finer edge on it. For those who have been maybe familiar with the Claymore, um, you know, you'll know that it's uh, just a wonderful blade steel. So I think it was a great addition to a nice workhorse knife like this that you can really just use for just about anything. You know, these are designed for, uh, it's part of our black class, so it's tactical, but really, you know, for use by the guys who are in the motor pool working on, you know, yeah. on, on uh, Humvees and things like that. So. Uh, it has to be super tough. It has to be yeah. weighty. It's got a good weight to it. Um, but again, you've got a really high grind, so it, it actually slices a lot better than you would think for a, a nice beefy knife. So I'm super excited for that one too. Yeah. And we've had a lot and of that interest. wrap around is is great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we were kind of going for you know um, sort of a gun grip kind of feel. You know, yeah. just kind of yeah. kind of hearkening to that. Um, really, just because that's that's a really great shape to fill your hand. You know, so we wanted it to be tactile, really keep from rolling over or twisting in your hand, be super secure, but also very neutral. So yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great compromise there, I think. Now, this is definitely, I don't think it's gonna need much introduction, but the shootout, the 5370FE. Uh, we launched this about five weeks ago. Blew the doors off of pretty much every dealer, um, and uh, we're you know we're cranking them out as quick as we can. But uh, they are already hard to come by. We're super proud of it. Um, there's a lot of innovation that went into this knife. Uh, so first we've got a CF Elite handle. So that's a carbon fiber filled nylon. It's very lightweight, but also very rigid. Uh, very, very tough. I'm gonna to give a shout out to uh, PM2 OG. If you haven't seen his videos, uh, he's done a lot of testing videos that kind of show how tough you can be on this knife. We don't want you to abuse your knives, but uh, you know, it's crazy what this knife can take. So crew wear steel, super, super strong. Um, I think it's a great blade steel for an OTF because you can run it thin. Again, we've been talking about that. Thin and light is the name of the game. But it's a nice full height grind. It's a little bit broader blade than you think. I mean, if you imagine how much of that blade takes up space in the handle, yeah. that's a it's a pretty good ratio there. So uh, I am not an OTF guy, but this is an OTF I would carry for everyday carry, and you can just beat the crud out of it. So we're all super excited about it. Um, it's been so popular for us. So yeah. we're trying to get them into everybody's hands as quickly as we can. It's so light because of that that CF. Yeah, and honestly. That action is, that's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's super snappy. 
And honestly, your blade play is not bad for an OTF. No, and you know this. And you always have it. And you do always have it, but you know, for us, there really is like a fine line between reliability and super tight tolerances. You know, yeah. If you get too tight, the tolerance is too tight. Sometimes that can that can affect performance. It can mean that the knife is not necessarily going to function in every scenario, all different kinds of circumstances. Agreed. We want you to be able to get a little bit of dirt and grime in there yeah. and still have it function fairly yeah. well. One thing to remember is all of our OTFs, you know, when we started with the Infidel, they're meant for military use, you know, and we still uh, are a big supplier of uh, Infidel's OTFs to, to military units. So reliability is really, really important. So that's the number one thing when we design an OTF is it has to function in less than ideal circumstances. So I think we've definitely nailed that with, with the shootout. Um, and one cool thing also is the sound. It's kind of hard to get here at the show, but we actually spent a lot of time designing that sound. We didn't want it to feel too toy-like or sound tinny, which is really easy yeah. to do with a plastic injection molded handle like this. Um, and so we, we spent some time actually engineering that sound to make sure that it had the proper the proper clack. You know, it's gotta it's yeah. gotta have that right feel. So yeah, yeah, we spent some time on it. Yeah, it, it's it's good, guys. It's it's real. Good. <laughs> Uh, this is a new variant for the year, obviously. We came out with the Claymore last year with a serrated blade. We definitely heard a lot of feedback on that. Um, I was included in that. Um, I, uh, I spoke with our product team on the day that we launched the Claymore last year and said, guys, we need a, a non-serrated one. And they're like, yep, we're on it. And uh, so we delivered. Uh, you've got a non-serrated Claymore here. This is a uh, push-button auto. Yep. Super powerful. Lots and lots of power behind that spring. Um, Super slicey D2, CPM D2 blade, um, bribery handle, so very lightweight, pretty thin too. Yeah. Um, I mean, it looks like a pretty beefy, bulky knife, but it's, it's actually very nice for EDC in my opinion. And uh, there's a couple cool uh, Easter eggs in the handle. I, I, I know some people have seen them, but uh, I love to point it out anyway. You know, we, we definitely took the, uh, the Claymore name to heart and had a little bit of fun with this design, so. I hope that people are picking those out. Yeah, that kicks. Yeah. That kicks well. But I like that I can still, if I need to be out, uh -huh. that's good. It's got just enough jimping in the right places. It feels super solid without being overly aggressive texture-wise. Yeah. That feels good. Yeah. That feels really yeah. good. Um, I kind of have the powder coat on it is great too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a, a Cerakote on there. I love the traction on it. Um, it's actually not as it actually is less friction than uh, even a satin blade. So it doesn't affect cutting performance the way you might expect. I know a lot of people talk about that, but uh, no, I mean, I've never really noticed any sort of stickiness with the Cerakote. It works, it slides through stuff very, very easily. Um, I have described this kind of as like a, an auto bug out. I yeah. Mean, it's like if, if the bug out was on steroids and uh, you threw a couple of springs in it, this is actually kind of close to it because that blade is like, Fairly thin, high grind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love this thing. I, I might have to compare that to uh, a, a couple of autos I picked up at the show, guys. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a Pro Tech or two, and we'll have a little shootout for you guys. So, these um, have gotten a lot of attention. Um, this is the immunity family. So first up, we've got the full immunity. This is a manual blade, I'm sorry, a manual knife with a, an M4 blade. Then we have the auto immunity, which is an axis lock auto, also with an M4 blade. And then we have the partial auto immunity. So this is the same handle, so it's the same size, but with a sub two inch blade, also made of M4 steel. This is our, uh, essentially our California legal auto. And together, all three give you herd immunity. <laughs> so these are actually not launching this year. Okay. Uh, we pushed them back just a little bit. These will be launching uh, early next year. So we're, we're aiming for about February or March of next year. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. But all three of them, when they are available, when they are available, will be available in all three colors. Great. So that's great, actually great. it's pretty cool, and it'll come with the lanyards. But uh, yeah, we'll essentially be launching nine SKUs of one one design at the same time, which we've never done before. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, good three finger, 
with the lanyard, it's, you yep. know, And nice. that's part of the reason we threw that lanyard on there, too, is to give your, your pinky something to hold on to, you know, aside from also making it easier to draw out of the pocket. Kind of an interesting story behind this, too. Um, you know, we had a lot of requests from people through our, our FedGov team over the years. Uh, you know, people who are, you know, maybe former military, now they're working as uh, civilian contractors, yeah. what have you. Um, but as they're going into, like, federal buildings and things like that, where knife restrictions are a little bit higher, they're not able to carry what they've been used to carrying, uh, you know, something that's a little more defensive or whatever. So these uh, kind of help, you know, because of the size reduction, these can be carried into places that maybe have, you know, some permissibility issues. So, you know, now in order to carry something that is a little more defensive, a little more tactical, they can do that in some of these areas where there are higher restrictions. So. Um, we kind of fulfilled that need there, and obviously, and it's great to be able to offer, you know, our, our fans in California something that they can buy that's nice and robust. M4 steel is great. It's I fantastic. love it. Fantastic. Yeah. It. And one of the things, great things about it, because it's so strong, you can do this nice, fine tip without worrying about snapping off. So, great. Yeah. Great. And I love the Warncliffe shape. I think it's, you know, it's, it's a little different for us. You yeah. Know, it's nice yeah. to change it up. Always. <laughs> And then let's head straight for the that bottom one for yeah. you. Yeah. So this is uh, this is our cutlery line, obviously. So cutlery line is fully customizable on our website. We were really happy to launch those back in October. Uh, and this is an example of the station knife. This is kind of our flagship for the cutlery line. We're super proud of this. It's been incredibly popular. And this version of it is actually the uh, collector's edition. So. What we've done with the collector's edition cutlery, these are 200 pieces um, made with balder pattern Dama steel. We've got the Arctic Storm fat carbon scales, and then um, you've got marbled carbon fiber for the bolster, and a 24 karat gold plated ring. Each one of them is numbered. This one is number 131. So yeah, those are available now, um, and we Great. also offer the three piece set in that collector's edition as well. Fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, they're gorgeous. They come in a, uh, a walnut case um, that just nice. really accentuates the knives. It looks sick. If you check out our Instagram, we have this really cool picture shot by a guy that um, just really is beautiful to look at with those knives in the case. So. Great, great. Well, John, this has been great. It's an exciting year for you guys. There's it, a, it definitely is, yeah. This might be one of the biggest years as far as new models I think or variations. I think I would agree, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, with the pandemic, you know, obviously there was lots of time to, you know, kind of rethink some things. And, right, right. And uh, we didn't want to miss a beat, and we really didn't um, because of COVID. So our team has worked incredibly hard, uh, you know, through lots of different challenges from 2020 on. Um, so there was a lot of hard work that went into our cutlery launch and all of these new products that uh, yeah. we're all pretty excited about. So they look great. yeah, we're, we're really happy with how things turned out. And it's so cool to be able to talk to people here and see Absolutely. the enthusiasm. Absolutely. So It looks great. I really appreciate it, John. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Hope you have a good show. Yeah,